Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing one of the most classic Christmas movies, which I feel like is only right after I spent most of the month of December reviewing the new Disney Plus series, which by the way, if you want to check out all of my episode reviews and breakdowns, you can click right up here. But I feel like it is only right that we go all the way back almost 30 years now, I cannot believe it, to the original and the classic that started it all, that would be Tim Allen, The Santa Claus. But before we get into my review and breakdown of this video, I just want to remind you guys, I am going to be releasing a video every day leading up until Christmas. So if you don't want to miss any of the content that I'm putting out here on the channel, just go down below, hit that big subscribe button. Your support always means the world to me. But without further ado, let's get into today's review and breakdown of Tim Allen's The Santa Claus. At the start of the movie, we get introduced to this man named Scott Kelvin, who seems to be a very successful salesperson at this very well-known toy company. We come to find out that him and his ex-wife are now divorced, but they do have a son together, and he is coming over for Christmas Eve night. And this is where we see that the relationship between the two is very rocky, and the son would rather not spend Christmas Eve or really any time with him, and rather would just be with his mom. Scott turns out to be a terrible cook, and it seems to be that the only place that is open for them to go out to eat is Denny's. And this is arguably where I think we get the most passionate and raw and real performance of acting that I have ever seen. So let's roll the clip. <laughs> what do you say we start out with? Cold glasses, a delicious seasonal favorite, eggnog. I don't like eggnog. We're out. Coffee, decaf. Mm -hmm. All chocolate milk, please. We're out. Plain milk's fine. Okay. At least we know they got hot apple pie. We did. Mm-hmm. To be real, when I was that kid's age and I was really craving chocolate milk and I just really wanted it and then found out that they were out of it, plus it was Christmas Eve on top of that, I would be just as disappointed as he was. And to be completely honest, even at my age now, I would still probably have just as much disappointment as he did. As Scott is tucking his son Charlie in for the night, Charlie seems to have a lot of questions revolving around Santa and Christmas that, quite frankly, Scott just doesn't have the answers for and he dismisses them. But he is woken up in the middle of the night by Charlie when they hear a bunch of clatter on the roof. So they investigate and go outside and you're never going to believe what they find. Much to his dismay, Scott looks up onto the roof and finds Santa and his sleigh and his reindeer, but accidentally scares him and makes him fall 20 feet onto the ground. When Scott and Charlie start discussing and they look away just for a brief moment, they look back over and the man has now disappeared and the only thing remaining there is the Santa suit. Scott starts searching the suit trying to find any identification of who that man could be. When he finds a card saying that it is a Santa Claus and if anything were to happen to him, put on his suit and get in his sleigh and the reindeer will know what to do. If it wasn't for Charlie, Scott most likely would have had nothing to do with this. He probably would have went back inside, went back up to bed and that would have just been the end of it. But with a lot of convincing from Charlie and him tricking him to get into the sleigh, the reindeer take off, and before we knew it, he is the new Santa on the route on Christmas Eve. Again, Scott is just completely shocked, and he continues to make the rounds on Christmas, and when they finish up, he tells the reindeer to take him back home, but they have something else in mind, and they take him all the way up into the North Pole. As a viewer, this is the first time that we get to see the North Pole, and this is the first time that we were introduced to the head elf, Bernard, and Bernard essentially just tells Scott when he gets there, when he put on the suit... He agreed to all the terms of the Santa Claus, which essentially is meaning when he decided to put that suit on, he now has to become Santa until he's unable to do so. Although Scott continuously denies accepting this job, Bernard insists that he has 11 months to go back to Earth, get all of his affairs in order, and he has to report back to the North Pole on Thanksgiving. Scott and Charlie are then sent back to Earth, and then this is where his ex-wife picks Charlie up, and Charlie tells her everything that happened the past night, and she starts to believe that Scott is going a little bit crazy telling all of these stories to Charlie, because she doesn't really believe him because he is just a kid at this point. We start to see some time pass, and all of a sudden Scott is transforming into Santa, and he really doesn't understand what is going on because he doesn't fully believe it. He puts on like 45 pounds in one week, and he'll shave in the morning, and he'll have a beard grow back by the afternoon. And this just justifies the ex-wife thinking that he is crazy because she thinks that he is just putting on this persona to convince Charlie that Santa's real. And it ends up with him losing visitation rights to seeing Charlie, and it becomes this huge ordeal. The rest of the film is spent as Scott slowly and slowly transitions more and more in becoming the Santa character and even starts believing himself. And it even gets to the point where he can be walking down the sidewalk and recognizes a kid right away and knows if they are going to be on the nice or naughty list. The time goes on and it is now Christmas Eve of the following year and Scott does assume the Santa character and he does make the rounds delivering all the presents with Charlie. But there is one minor issue. Everyone thinks that Charlie is kidnapped as Scott does not have any visitation rights and should not be seeing him. Ever since that first trip to the North Pole almost a year ago, Charlie actually really looks up to Scott and loves spending time with him because he sees him as a new Santa Claus. As the two of them are making the rounds delivering their presents, they stop at his ex-wife's house, and this is when they find out that Scott is actually telling the truth and that he is Santa. 
and she decides to burn the papers, giving him more custody rights to see Charlie anytime that he wants. As the movie closes out, Scott is in his sleigh with his reindeer on the roof, but it is surrounded by a bunch of police cars because they think he's a criminal and a kidnapper. But as he takes off, they kind of are all in awe, and they realize that he is actually Santa, and the audience kind of just assumes that they are dropping all of the charges and are not going to chase after him, mostly because they probably couldn't. And that is going to wrap up my brief plot synopsis of this film. It has actually been quite a few years since I went back and rewatched this film in its entirety from start to finish, and I really forgot how great this film is and how much nostalgia that it brings back, but without a doubt, it is going to be in my top five Christmas movies with no argument. Even though this film was released many years before I was born, there's just something about those films that were released in the 90s that just brings such a warmth or nostalgia feel to them. I don't know if it's kind of like the crackly and grainy footage or just the fact that that there's really no technology based in the storyline because all of the movies that we grew up with kind of revolve around technology, having those smartphones and the access to the internet. But just going back and rewatching these films that are just plain storylines that don't rely on that technology, it is just kind of warming and you kind of wish that you were transported back into that time. I can't go throughout this video without mentioning another positive aspect which makes this film so good, and that is just simply Tim Allen. He was made for this role, and he is such a good actor bringing that very witty humor, and he does just such a phenomenal job at bringing this character to life. Another reason why I think this film has stood the test of time and it is such a classic for families and they rewatch it every year, and that is that it has comedy and jokes for kids as they're watching it, but then you go rewatch it as an adult, and it has a lot of humor for them as well, and that is why I think it is so enjoyable for you to sit down on a family movie night and watch it, because it is enjoyable for them, but it's also enjoyable as an adult for you to watch as well. So there you guys have it. That is going to wrap up my review and breakdown of the classic Christmas 1994 film, The Santa Claus, which obviously stars Tim Allen. I'd love to hear from you guys down below in the comments. Does this fall in your top five favorite Christmas film? Does it bring back a lot of nostalgia when you watch it? Is this on your annual watch list around this Christmas time? And as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to go down below, hit that big thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button while you're down there as well because you don't want to miss any of the content that I'm bringing out. And as always, until I see you guys in the next video, peace out.